Okay, we've learned how to draw Lewis dot structures. And then we learned how those Lewis dot structures affect the shape of molecules, covalent molecules. Now we're going to learn how the shape of molecules affects the polarity of molecules. So we need a few definitions here before we get started. We need to talk about bond polarity first. A dipole moment shows the direction of a polar bond in a molecule. Here I'm showing you a polar bond. Chlorine is very electronegative. Hydrogen is very not electronegative. So electrons spend more of their time around chlorine than around hydrogen. So we're going to represent this polar bond by adding an arrow to the diagram, and the arrow is going to point towards the more electronegative atom. So there is a dipole. There's a lopsidedness to this uh, molecule. And we draw the arrow to show where the electron spends most of its time. Um, so remember, electrons are negative. Um, and look at this end of the arrow. We, we make a cross, making it look like a positive sign. So this is the positive end of the molecule. And we point towards the negative end of the, uh, of, of, of the, um, of the bond. We've also talked before about representing these partial charges with these lowercase Greek delta, um, partial negative charge, partial positive charge. So that's the polarity of a bond, but I want to look at the polarity of an entire molecule. And this is important because the polarity of a molecule determines whether something will dissolve in water. Um, so this is an important property to just study. So polarity of a molecule depends on the polarity of each individual bond inside the molecule. And then it depends on the shape and the symmetry of the molecule. So nonpolar molecules. Nonpolar molecules are nonpolar either because they have no polar bonds or because it has polar bonds that are arranged in a symmetric way so that the dipole moments cancel each other out. So example of a nonpolar molecule, one nonpolar molecule would be oxygen gas. This molecule is not polar because it has no polar bonds. This is an exactly um, equal tug of war for electrons between oxygen and oxygen because they have the same electronegativities. This uh, molecule down below of boron trifluoride is also nonpolar. It's nonpolar for a different reason. Fluorine is super electronegative. There are definitely dipoles in this molecule. But the dipoles are arranged perfectly symmetrically. This is a equal three-way tug of war for electrons between this fluorine, this fluorine, and this fluorine. So even though there are dipole, individual bond dipoles, they cancel each other out. And this molecule is not polar. So let's look at a molecule that is polar. In order to have a polar molecule, you need, it needs to have polar bonds. And then those polar bonds must be arranged asymmetrically. And if we do that asymmetrically, the dipole moments will not cancel. So here in a water molecule, hydrogen is much more electronegative, uh, uh, I'm sorry, much less electronegative than oxygen. So the arrows point towards oxygen. Oxygen is more electronegative. Now, although this molecule looks symmetric, if you look at how the, um, it, it is symmetric in a sense, but it's not symmetric in such a way that these dipole moments cancel out because there is a net dipole for the whole molecule. The dipole for the whole molecule generally points up, okay? There's no side to side. The symmetry of the hydrogens makes sure that there's no pull to the left or pull to the right. But if you look at this, both of my arrows point up. So my total uh, molecule dipole also points up. So what must we have to have a polar molecule? We must have either an asymmetric shape, 
or asymmetric atoms. We need asymmetric shape or asymmetric atoms. So this here um, is uh, not something I would ask you to name because it has uh, three different types of atoms, but this would be uh, trichloromethane. Looks very similar to um, methane here, but when I a tetrahedron shape is a perfect four-way tug of war between these four atoms. So if I have the same four atoms coming off of my central carbon, it is exactly a perfect four-way tug of war between um, uh, those four atoms. This is not a polar molecule. However, if I change some of the atoms so that some of them are hydrogens and some of them are chlorines, I have now made this a polar molecule. I have a symmetric shape, but the atoms are not symmetrical. So between carbon and hydrogen, carbon is more electronegative, so the dipole points this way, that bond dipole, and then between carbon and chlorine, chlorine is more electronegative, so I've got a bunch of downward dipoles over here as well. So overall, there's a net dipole moment downwards because of this asymmetric distribution of atoms. So let's practice. With nitrogen trifluoride, the structure for this molecule is um, trigonal pyramidal. We're going to have nitrogen with its lone pair of electrons, and then we have these fluorines sticking out of the bottom. So just focusing on the nitrogen, I know I didn't give fluorine a full valence shell the way I would have to with a true Lewis dot structure. But because I have three bonds and one lone pair, this is trigonal pyramidal. And my bond dipoles all point toward fluorine because fluorine is the most electronegative element. So overall, this shape is lopsided. Overall, my shape is lopsided and there is a net dipole moment downward. This is a polar molecule. Polar molecule. With boron trihydride, Boron is happy with just six valence electrons. It does not get a full valence shell. It does not have a lone pair of electrons. This is a trigonal planar, trigonal planar structure. Hydrogen and boron are almost identical in electronegativity. Hydrogen is just slightly more electronegative than the boron is, but these are extremely weak uh, dipoles here. Um, but it almost doesn't matter because the trigonal planar um, shape, geometry, is perfectly symmetric. It's a perfectly symmetric three-way tug of war between the three hydrogen atoms. So this is a nonpolar atom uh, molecule. Lastly, um, we have dichloromethane. And this is based off of a tetrahedron shape. Carbon often for forms tetrahedrons. Um, so I'll draw my, a hydrogen coming up, a hydrogen coming up, a chlorine coming down, a chlorine coming down. Um, and chlorine is much more electronegative than carbon, but carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen. So overall, there is a net dipole moment um, downward, in, in, as I've drawn the atom. And therefore, um, even though this is a very symmetrical tetrahedral shape, the atoms are asymmetric and therefore this is a polar molecule. I hope this helps.